Today is Sunday, June 28th, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's text, uh, in its shortness, uh, also does not give us uh, any uh, any terms or phrases that we might need to uh, unpack immediately. However, it does set us down in a context where it might be good for us to remember that this was written during a time when hospitality was a necessity for life. It, it wasn't just that, that hospitality was nice. Uh, it wasn't that just that hospitality was a good practice if you wanted to make people like you. It was that hospitality was required in order to make society safe. Uh, why that is, is because when people travel, there wasn't the kind of uh, what we now call a, a hospitality service, a hospitality industry that existed uh, to provide that safety for people. It was required uh, that people kind of did that through their own homes. Uh, and so there were a lot of acts of hospitality. There were a lot of kind of uh, cultural standards on what this hospitality would look like in order to make it safe for that society uh, to, to function. So Jesus is talking about the disciples and their experience of, of welcome. Uh, this is tied to the, the part that we heard not too long ago when Jesus talked about, as he was sending out the disciples, uh, about if they didn't experience uh, welcome, if they didn't find a place that was worthy to receive them, uh, what they ought to do is they went out uh, uh, in pairs. Uh, and also remember that, that Jesus sent them out uh, uh, un unburdened from the trappings of power, uh, and, and I think maybe a better way to describe that might be to also say that Jesus sent them out in, in, a, um, in a condition that would require them to identify with, with those who had nothing, to identify with the poor and oppressed because they, uh, they had let go of those trappings of power and were now in the same position as those uh, who went who, who, who were forced to move through life without those same trappings ever. So Jesus has asked the, his disciples uh, to, to actually not just, uh, not just embody those who are poor, but, but Jesus' own homelessness uh, and, and poverty. So, so Jesus has already identified with the poor, and now he, he is asking his disciples to identify with them by identifying themselves with him. All right, that's kind of important. Uh, I think as Jesus is trying to explain what does it mean to be his disciple, that's part and parcel right there. Uh, lifting up the cross that we heard from last week uh, is to, to identify with those who have been oppressed 
by systems of power uh, we might call, uh, some people might call uh, the power of empire, uh, to identify with those who have been oppressed by that. So all of these are kind of connected through that. So we then come to these acts of hospitality. Um, and sure, uh, these are things for us to look at. And, and uh, I know many of you, like myself, might have the question, well, what does it mean to welcome a prophet in the name of a prophet or a righteous person in the name uh, of a righteous person uh, and then to receive the rewards and, and to offer a cup of cold water to a little one, uh, uh, which uh, the Greek word there means uh, to a child, um, in the name of a disciple and, and then receive uh, a reward. Uh, welcoming in the name of something means uh, welcome welcome that person for what they are to recognize to recognize who they are uh, to see them uh, and and to honor them and and our content that this this text has come up in a lot of ways you've probably seen it floating around on social media especially if like me you have a whole bunch of theology geeks who are on your friends list uh, for good reason uh, this this text calls us to recognize the the other person uh, for who they are and and calls us to respect and honor them within the same kind of context of this call uh, to hospital hospitality uh, as an act of of uh, kindness for the sake of that person's survival I think it becomes pretty easy then to start making these connections with what's going on in our world about being able to recognize people who they are for who they are. Uh, that's uh, especially important both uh, as we come to a close uh, of this this Pride Month uh, to recognize people for who they are uh, and and to uh, to honor that and to engage in ways with people. Um, that honor who they are and and help to uh, seek life for them. But it also uh, connects with the ongoing search for racial justice in our world uh, to see people uh, uh, to see people as who they are. Uh, you might see a lot of talk about not being colorblind. I think any of us who have used that phrase at any point in our life, we meant it in a good way. Uh, but, but I think, and I hope we're all learning that there are ways that, that we can recognize that person, recognize who they are, the color of their skin, their sexual identity, whatever it might be, and honor that instead of letting it become a means which we divide them from us. That's kind of what is, is, is sown through this text of welcome and hospitality is to seek life for the the other. Now, um, churches have been really good at trying to find ways of practicing hospitality for the people who come in. I think for us as Christians, it's important for us to look at this text and see uh, that Jesus is not talking about uh, Jesus is not talking about welcoming people into the disciples' houses. Jesus is talking about the disciples being welcomed uh, as they go out from the church. And so, dear church, I think it's important for us to realize that we are not only called to practice hospitality in our own space, but we are being called to go out from our spaces and to embody this hospitality in the places in which we go. Uh, we may need to learn the grace of being on the receiving end of that hospitality. Uh, we're really good about offering it, but I don't know that we're always good about leaving our safe space. Uh, and the, the, the place that we're used to, we know where everything is, and to go into someone else's space graciously and let them be host to us. Uh, that might be our call and uh, I agree with our Dean. I hope you've been checking in on some of her sermons uh, because I, I think 
that while this pandemic is an awful and terrible thing, uh, that in spite of that, uh, God continues to work and call God's people. And I think one of the things that God might be calling us to look at is how to leave the, the comfort of the spaces that we've created and to go out uh, and, and embody this hospitality, this graciousness, this welcome, uh, and then also to learn how to receive it. Um, th th this, this is what the Bible's talking about when it's talking about evangelism. Uh, I grew up, many of us grew up in, in places where the practice of evangelism was going door to door uh, and inviting people to church. The Bible really seems to me talks about uh, evangelism as an action. It's something that you, you do consistently in your life and people see a difference in you. Uh, when Paul's concerned about evangelism, he always is writing a church about their behavior. And so for us, I think this, this is a call to embody graciousness in our own being, not just on Sunday morning, but every day of the week. Uh, because it says right here in these, these few short verses uh, that, that embodying that allows people to welcome us, uh, which means, Jesus says, they're welcoming him, which means, again, as Jesus says, that they're encountering God through that. So that's how we bear witness. The, the, all the other things we've told that we need to do for evangelism, that's really all, that's all in God's court. Uh, it's kind of above our, our pay grade, as one might say. But embodying that as Jesus' disciples are what we're called to do. Uh, and so, uh, if, uh, if nothing else, we, we begin that practice with the simple act of offering someone a cup of cold water. It could be as small as that, but that's the beginning of the practice which leads us to embodying uh, the God of justice, the God of grace, the God of mercy and kindness, uh, embodying that in our own lives and sharing that with others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of compassion, encourage our relationships with all our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations, shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join in a shout of praise. We remember our bishops, Elizabeth and Patricia, our director of evangelical mission, William, all the synod staff, our Dean Regina, and all the pastors and deacons of your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the creation is crying out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, politicians, and community leaders to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick lonely or abandoned. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember our ministries and community partners. By my side, Lutheran Settlement House, United Lutheran Seminary, 
Fission and Sea Chamber Music, Soul Collective, Project Safe, The Simple Way, More Voice Studio, and all those things for which you are preparing us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear now those prayers of concern and of thanksgiving which we now lift before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, you gather into your embrace all who have died. Today we remember especially Richard Decky and Irenaeus, Bishop of Leon. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now for our prayer during our time apart. Let us pray. Most merciful Lord, we grieve that we cannot assemble to hear your word and receive your supper. We experience the weight of separation and we long for conversation and consolation gathered as one body in you. Yet, O oh Lord Jesus, remind us of the bold and beautifully audacious woman who also could not touch your body but dared in faith to grab hold of the hem of your garment that she would be healed. Grant to us such boldness of faith when we too may not take hold of your body and blood that we might, like her, cling to the hem of your garment and receive the grace of your healing. Deliver us from pestilence, sorrow, and hardship. Protect those who must put themselves at risk during this time. And this wilderness, teach us to be your people and bring us again to your table, so that we may not only touch your hem, but commune with you. Shape us through this experience to better embody being your people for the sake of the world. Renew and restore us, O Christ, for you live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us in God's peace, now and forever. Amen. Now go in peace and stay fabulous for the Lord. Amen. <laughs>